Why did I buy a year's worth of birthday cards in one single day? And what have camels got to do with saving? All of these questions and more are about to be answered as we count down the 15 best ways to save money successfully. And you know this video is serious because I'm wearing a blazer. Number one is to pay yourself first. And what this means is that as soon as you get any money coming in from your salary or whatever, you need to immediately put a set percent of that into savings. That's because we all have this attitude of when the money's there in our bank account, it's there to be spent. So you need to remove that temptation and make it not even possible to spend that money because it's immediately and automatically transferred somewhere else. So if you get paid monthly, set up a direct debit with the amount you want to save so it's instantly gone and then you're not going to be able to spend it. Number two is to use price comparison websites. So whenever you're buying anything of real value, there's normally a comparison website so you can check all of the prices available and find the cheapest one. Because with things like gas and electricity, there's no difference on what supplier you use, and yet most people just go with the name they've heard of or the one that's already with the house. No, do your research and you'll potentially end up with some very big savings. Number three is to negotiate more. And I feel like the only reason people don't do this is because they don't really like the feeling of haggling, but it's such a great way of saving money and something you're completely entitled to do. And one of the best ways to do this is if you're not getting a particular good deal with whatever service provider you're with, whether it's for your broadband, for example, or your phone contract, just ring them up, tell them you're not happy, and say you're thinking of leaving, because often the sales team can't give you as good a deal as the team that handle people who are about to leave. So if you go along with it saying, yeah, I'm not happy, I'm going to move elsewhere, I found a better deal elsewhere, nine times out of ten I've found, they'll be able to at least match that deal. Most recently, I literally rang up my phone provider and said, you know, my contract's just finished, uh, the rate I'm on now isn't very good, what can we do? And they literally cut the price in half. With almost all service providers, there's normally a bit of room for negotiation, so don't be afraid to ask for that better deal. Number four, always look for voucher or discount codes. You know when you're checking out on a site, it will always say, what's the discount code you want to use? Well, I don't get why people wouldn't be searching on Google for a discount code every single time, because quite often, literally just putting in the name of the site, voucher code, will give you a code that gets you some money off. Sometimes as much as 50% off. I think there's an app that's mainly best used in the US called Honey that automatically looks for codes for you, but it literally takes a two minute Google search and I've saved a lot of money just from doing this. Number five is cashback sites, which almost sound too good to be true because you literally just click through to the site you're about to buy from through their link on this cashback website and then you'll get a percent of your money back. Now the actual amount will obviously vary hugely, but it can actually be really high sometimes, especially if you're getting a bigger purchase. So before buying anything online, it's worth checking if the website is listed on one of the cashback websites. I've put two links below to two of the biggest cashback websites, and so if you're not already a member, make sure you get on these because next time you buy something, you might be able to get some of that money back just by using this link. There literally is no downside. Number six is loyalty schemes. And so if there's anywhere you shop at all regularly, you should see if they've got a loyalty scheme because most places do now. And that means that after a little while of shopping there, you're gonna end up getting something for free. And so this is a great way of saving money without really changing anything that you're doing other than downloading an app or signing up to something. Number seven is buying in bulk so you get a bigger discount. And you can often team up with someone to do this, so if you don't want to buy all the things for yourself at once, but there's a good offer on, well, team up with someone else who wants some of the stuff and then split the cost between you. Now, this is where that birthday card story I came and mentioned earlier is because on the 1st of January this year, I literally bought all the birthday cards I was going to need for the entire year, which sounds absolutely mad. But the reason was I bought them online from Funky Pigeon where you make creative cards. And not only did I get a huge discount by buying in bulk. I also was able to use cashback that I mentioned earlier. I was also able to use a voucher code that I found by searching online like I mentioned earlier. And so with all of those things combined, I ended up getting all my birthday cards for the year at a ridiculously low price. Whereas if I just bought them all throughout the year, one at a time, not only would I have been paying way more for postage, I would have been then paying more because I didn't get the bulk discount and I wouldn't have been able to use the same voucher code. So apply this concept to other areas of your life. Where can you go and buy a lot of the things you're going to need all at once so it can save you money in the long term? But this also brings me on to point number eight. Make more creative gifts. So for birthdays and Christmases, rather than always just spending money, 
What can you actually use your time for to make something more personal? Not only will this often be more appreciated anyway, because it clearly shows that you made some effort, but it also means that Christmases and birthdays don't have to be a huge expense. Number nine is to use websites that track the prices of things, because quite often there's something we want to buy, but we don't need it right now. And so for example with Amazon, let's say you go on and find something that is a bit expensive, you don't really need it right now, but you would like it. Well, instead of buying it right this minute, what you can do is go to a website called Camel Camel Camel. What this website does is it monitors all the prices of every product on Amazon. So you can find the product you want, put in your email address, and put the desired price in, and they will then email you when the product goes to that price or lower. So you can set up a few of these, so you can set up a really ambitious one in case it goes super low, but then like a more reasonable one where it drops like 10% in price. The point is, if it's not something you need right away and you don't mind waiting a little bit, well, it's sometimes worth taking this gamble of seeing if the price goes down, because with Amazon, the prices fluctuate a crazy amount, and you'll be able to see on Camel 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 what the actual prices have been over the past year or whatever, because then you've got an idea of whether it's at a really good price at the moment, or whether it actually just spiked up very recently and is likely to fall back down again. Obviously if the price that's on there right at this minute is amazing and you really want to buy it then go for it because it, it could go up, but if you're in no rush this is a great way of getting the same product at a lower price and saving more money. Now the site I mentioned is for Amazon but I'm sure there are alternatives for other sites. In fact in the UK there's a site I like to use called Hot UK Deals where they literally just flag up the best deals at the moment on certain products so you can see from the rating of whether it's hot or cold of what people are saying about it. If it's something with a really hot rating, that means the product is at an exceptionally good price. So let's say you're looking for a laptop right now, go onto Hot UK Deals, type in the laptop specifications you want, or just search for laptops, and scroll through, see what the hot offers are right at this minute, because this uses all different stores across the country. Number 10 is to become a master of your calendar. And there are a few ways to do this. So one is that whenever you've got money coming into you and you're due money from somewhere, make sure you put a little note in your calendar somewhere to check that it's actually come into your account. Because quite often if we've got money coming in from different places, then we sort of lose track of it a little bit. Whereas if it's in your calendar that you're due it for this date, you can then follow up if it isn't there. This is a great way of making sure you don't miss any money that you're owed. But also, if you're closely monitoring your calendar in this way and keeping track of all these different things that are coming and going, well, another great thing you can do is whenever you sign up for a free trial of something, make sure you put in the date that the trial is due to end in your calendar. Because what that means is the day before you're actually due to get billed for this free trial finishing, there'll be a reminder from your calendar saying, free trial's about to end, so you can go in and make sure you cancel it if you don't want it. It's crazy the amount of people who sign up for free trials but then just completely forget about them and end up getting billed for something they don't want. I mean, that's obviously kind of what they're doing with the free trials, hoping that that happens. But if you put it in your calendar, you'll never forget to cancel a free trial that you no longer want. Number 11 is to complain when things aren't good. As a customer, you should have quite high standards. Customer service has become a huge focus for companies. And so if something isn't right, you are well within your rights to point out, you know, this isn't what I wanted. This isn't how it was supposed to be. This product isn't working as it was described. And most of the time, companies will be very accommodating for this. For example, for me with Amazon, most recently, I literally had a printer that I'd barely used, but it was now outside of the manufacturer's one-year warranty. So I said to Amazon, I literally haven't used this much, and it's already broken. And they said, yep, you know what? You're a loyal customer here. We're going to give you a completely full refund. And this was on a printer that had been used and I'd actually owned for over a year. Now, it did break very quickly in terms of the amount of times I used it, but most people would go, oh, it's outside the manufacturer's warranty, that money's gone, I'll just have to buy a new printer. No, talk to the company, share your concerns, especially companies like Amazon where they have amazing customer service, they're normally willing to go the extra mile. Now, obviously you have to do this within reason, but I'm just saying that there's a lot of people who when something goes wrong, they just go, oh, the money's gone, I've lost it, which is a terrible thing to do, especially when you're trying to save money. Often you're more entitled than you think to getting some of that money back, or at least getting a new free alternative, which will save you some more money. 
money. Number 12 is to become more minimalist, which will not only help you with saving, but it'll help you become more organized. Because I think we're all very guilty of buying lots of stuff that we just don't need. We're living in a culture of consumerism. Well, try to break that. Make a deliberate decision right now that you're gonna stop buying all that unnecessary junk, save the money instead, so you can put it towards experiences and things that are actually gonna matter more to you in the long term. And so the flip side to this point is that not only should you try to buy less, but you should try to sell more. I guarantee we've all got plenty in our rooms that we just don't need, are never gonna use, don't really have much sentimental value, but still have some value to someone else. Even if it's only a small value, we could sell that, get the money, and put it into savings. And most people just won't do this because they think it's not worth the effort, but just the other week I used a site called Music Magpie, where you list old games and books and CDs that you no longer need or want, and then they'll just send you a free box so you can put them in and pay you whatever they think it's worth. Now, it's not gonna be crazy money. If you try and list it individually on eBay, you'd probably get more money, but it's a great way if you just wanna quickly clear out some old stuff that you're never gonna want and get some immediate cash back in return so you can put it straight into savings. It's quick and easy, and I recommend any old books and CDs and DVDs and stuff that you're never gonna use it's worth listing on a site like this just to get some extra savings and make some more space. Number 13 is to actually track your spending because when you kind of audit yourself in this way, you're able to see where you're actually spending most of your money because day to day, we don't always realize exactly where it's all going. But when you look at the bigger picture of the last couple of months, you can see the trends of where am I spending money that I really didn't need to spend that money or where I could buy a cheaper brand and not really have any difference in quality. I'm just kind of paying for the name. You can spot all these little trends and see where the money's adding up and going. And that's a great way of then making a decision of, okay, here's where I'm gonna be able to save money on these things. And then keep tracking your progress so you can see the improvement. And it'll feel good when you notice that your monthly amount being spent is going down. Number 14, never shop when hungry. In fact, never shop when you don't actually need something at all, because if you're actively browsing the shops, then of course you're more likely to spend money that you just don't need or really have, as opposed to if you just go when you've got a shopping list and stick to that list because it's stuff that you really actually need, well then of course that's gonna be a better way of saving money than just randomly browsing and going, oh, that looks nice, oh yeah, I think I'll have that as well. Stick to the list that you've taken and the stuff that actually is needed. And if you just stop going to the shops when you don't need to or stop browsing, browsing online shops, you'll be surprised how easy this one actually is. And finally, number 15 is once you've saved money from all these different ways, you then need to invest it wisely in something that's gonna give you a high return. And this is often something that will give you a lot of compound interest. Now, compound interest is what Albert Einstein described as the eighth wonder of the world. Now, that's because once you've got compound interest, it's incredible how rapidly it builds up. As I'm sure you know, what it means is that once you put in your own money, you're then gonna get interest on top of that. But then next time round, you're gonna get interest on top of your own money plus the interest, so it's gonna be even more money and it's gonna keep growing and building and it's gonna get faster and faster at building and get higher and higher amounts the longer you leave it in there because the interest is just earning interest on itself. So make a commitment today to saving more money, using some of these steps, finding your own creative methods to save a bit of extra money, put it into a reliable investment or savings account that's got a good interest rate by shopping around for the best one, and then just watch as the money grows. Thanks for watching guys, I'll see you next time.